It's the Blue Jays this week, Vodcast, Ben Ennis and Ben NS. Ben Nicholson-Smith joining me from Sportsnet.ca. Don't worry, Mike Wilner will be on this program in just a second. He's got an interview with Neil Wagner, but Ben, uh, pinch hitting for him. Thanks a lot for doing this, Ben. Uh, let's talk about this Blue Jays team, and we know pretty much all season long, the problem has been the starting pitching, and that continues. One of the worst staffs, starting pitching-wise, in Major League Baseball behind even the Houston Astros, like 30th in Major League Baseball. This is what we're talking about here. And whenever they get good news, Josh Johnson returning, they get some more bad news as Brandon Morrow is out. I I'm not shocked that he didn't make that start on Sunday, said it wasn't a big deal. But any time you're dealing with, uh, with arm pain and you're a starting pitcher, that's not good. No, it's definitely not. And I think it probably is for the best that they did put Brandon Morrow on the disabled list. You don't want to mess around with the pitcher's health, and especially when it does come down to a an elbow, a forearm, anything like that. So... It's a good thing, but it's one of the few good things that the Blue Jays have really had this year. And with Josh Johnson coming back, maybe they can get some solid starts from him in a row. But really, like you say, it has been probably the worst part of a very disappointing Blue Jays team. Yeah, I mean, there was a little bit there where the offense wasn't clicking. But overall, the whole season, they just have not got the starting pitching. And yes, you can point to the injuries. That's fine. And they've been part of it. But even the guys, when they're healthy, have not been good. I mean, Josh Johnson, when he was healthy, wasn't good. You can point to that start in, in Detroit that I was actually at to, to go see. And maybe the weather played into that one a little bit. But Brandon Morrow, when he was healthy, he hasn't been good. R.A. Dickey has had a couple of good starts, but overall, he's been pretty poor. This is a, a, a lot of teams can point to injuries. Every team goes through injuries. That's not the problem, though, with this team right now, is it? No, it's definitely not. I mean, you look up and down the roster, their only starter with an ERA below 5 is Jay Happ. And he's injured, and his ERA is 491. So it's uh -huh. not even as though he's having a great season. You know, yeah. it, It's been very disappointing for this team, and they need to get a lot of improvement. Not an easy thing to do midway through the season. And there are big questions for 2014 right now. Yeah, certainly. And uh, when you look at a guy like Ricky Romero, who was an all-star just a couple of years ago, and... You think about slotting him in as your number five starter. What a luxury this team had going into the season. Now he's a guy that nobody in Major League Baseball wanted. He, he's off the 40-man roster, just passed through waivers without anybody even uh, thinking about taking a sniff with all the money still left on his deal. It's, it's the multi-million dollar question. Can Ricky Romero be salvaged? Uh, there's been some ugly numbers along the way with the Buffalo Bisons, but his last one... I mean, at least he didn't walk anybody. He gave up a bunch of runs, but this is what it's come. Uh, this is what it's come to for Ricky Romero. Yeah, it really has, and it's it's one of the big questions for, for the Blue Jays right now and for the next couple of years. The nice thing for them is that they don't have to rush it. They know that no other team in baseball is going to take him off of their hands, and they have two years to figure this out. So even though right now he seems lost, and it, it's hard to imagine that he could get better. It has happened with other pitchers, and maybe Romero was the next to become not an all-star, but someone who's serviceable. Yeah, and uh, he's not the only guy on this team that has been waved off the 40-man roster. I mean, Edwin Encarnacion, Adam Lind, who we're going to get to in just a second as well. But let's talk about Encarnacion first. Going back to third base, and a, a lot of Blue Jays fans were freaking out at that prospect. I, I, I always thought he could pick it fine. It's just the throws over to first base were the issue for him. He's looked all right, though, in, uh, in limited time. Definitely. Turned a nice 5-4-3 double play in San Diego. Made a nice play in a bunt. You have to think that if he can even make the rudimentary plays, and we're not talking double plays and barehanded balls on bunts, but if he can do that, then the Blue Jays will be content. And luckily, this isn't a long-term solution for what they're expecting. Yeah, and hopefully Brett Laurie comes back as soon as humanly possible. But right now, Edwin Encarnacion playing some reasonable defense at third base, and it really hasn't affected him at the plate either. Uh, hit a couple of home runs, or at least one, in San Diego. I mentioned Adam Lind. He is the subject of our Ford Leaders in the Field segment. Ford Leaders in the Field. Presented by the 2013 Ford F-150, Canada's Player of the Year for 47 years running. Yes, Adam Lynn, the subject of our Ford Leaders in the Field segment. He's a kind of quiet guy, so it's not really a rah-rah type of leadership. How about just leading by example, playing really well. The Blue Jays' hottest hitter right now, and he's doing it in all facets. He's allowed to be into the lineup in the National League because Edwin is playing third base right now, but he's hitting lefties right now. What's going on with that? He's doing everything. He's hitting lefties. He's taking pitches. He's definitely working those counts and drawing more walks. He's hitting for more power than he has since his massive 2009 season. So basically everything is going right for Adam Lynn right now. And if you look around baseball, he really compares well with some of the better hitters in the game, at least on a per at-bat basis. 
He compares with Prince Fielder, Buster Posey. He's doing everything. So will it sustain itself? Yeah. I don't know. But at this point, he has definitely been great. Well, you look at the career numbers. He doesn't typically hit lefties. But if you're John Gibbons, do you keep running him out there against lefties even when they do return to the American League? Yeah, I mean, they started the season with Rajai D Davis DHing uh, with, with Lynn facing right-handers in, in sort of a platoon. But I think at this point, Lind has earned the right to be his everyday player and not to have to be in that platoon. So I think you'd rather have Adam Lind against the left-hander than Rajai Davis at this point. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, what the Blue Jays decide to do because obviously Rajai back off the disabled list. Anthony Goh still on this team as well. He's done a pretty good job in limited action as well. Mention that Mike Wilner is still on this show. You don't have to freak out. You don't have to send me tweets wondering where Mike is. He's coming up in just a second. Yes, he talked to Neil Wagner. The uh, newest Blue Jays reliever, he's done a great job out of the bullpen, completely unheralded, uh, 21st round pick, and uh, Mike got a chance to catch up with him out west. We're here in San Diego at beautiful Petco Park. We've got Neil Wagner with us. Just called up this week, and you've had two tremendous outings already. And Well, first of all, welcome back to the big leagues, and congrats on your success so far. Yeah, it's been great being back. Uh, I've gotten gotten to get into some close games, and it's been, it's been exciting so far. That's funny. We started the spring, and nobody really knew who you are. I remember I walked up to you and asked if you were related to Billy Wagner. <laughs> and, but uh, then you go out and you pitch, and you're, you're 96, 97, 98, and we're all just blown away by this minor league invite. And you really made an impression early on in the spring, and I think that's probably helped just as much as your success in Buffalo has. Yeah, uh, I mean, I came in with the attitude that, you know, as a minor league free agent, you don't get all that many opportunities to, to impress. And I had, came in and wanted to hit the ground running and, and make the absolute most I could out of it and uh, carried that success over to Buffalo, and, uh, you know, it's gotten me this opportunity. You had a lot of fans watching because we're keeping a close eye on the Bisons now, that not only because they're so close, but because the Internet is all over everything. You can see everything right away. Right. And, and every outing, every save, every next clean inning, people are saying, well, why isn't Neil Wagner here already? When are they going to call up Neil Wagner? What's, what's happening with Neil Wagner? Did you ever wonder those same things? Yeah, I mean, I, obviously you want to get to the big leagues and, and whatnot, but, you know, one, one of the strengths of... This team has been guys have been throwing scoreless things out of the bullpen. So, you know, there has to be an opening for you to be able to get there. So, you know, it's got to be patient and wait, wait for it to happen. And all you can focus on when you're in the minor leagues is, you know, treating it like that's the big leagues for you and, you know, hope that things break your way. We're here with Neil Wagner, and you followed Juan Perez in that game in Atlanta, just like you followed Juan Perez a million times in Buffalo this year. He was tremendous with those two and two-thirds perfect innings. How, how much did that... First of all, how proud were you of that as a minor league teammate, and how much of a lift did that give you coming into the game? Well, that's, I mean, I've been seeing Juan do that all year, so uh, it kind of, kind of gives, adds a little bit of a comfort level, just, oh, well, I'm just going to follow Juan into the game, and it's going to be business as usual, and, you know, the only difference is that at the end of the game, we have, you know, Casey Jansen coming in to finish it, so uh, it's, you know, it was good. I was happy for Juan and happy that we could both do well. I have to ask you, and you may not know the answer to this question, but I've been asked it on the post-game show probably every day since you got called up. What took you so long? I mean, there are guys who are there are peaks and valleys and bumps along the road and things you have no control over. But what was your road to the major leagues like? Uh, it's kind of been the story of trying to both not so much dial in the strike zone, but dial in command of the fastball within the strike zone and figuring out what else is going to go with go with that. And it's kind of been you know, add here, take away there, and just kind of uh, mix and match until we kind of got into a uh, right towards the end of a otherwise pretty forgettable year last year, uh, getting to kind of the right mix and, you know, just getting getting it right, it feels like. Every once in a while, it just clicks for a guy. Right, yeah, it's it was, it was just a, a process of basically figuring out everything that didn't work and, you know, kind of arrived at this, which hopefully continues to work for me. Yeah, we hope so, too. This is Neil Wagner. So far, so good. Thank you so much for your time, and we hope you're here for a while. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks. There he is. It's Neil Wagner now. Back to the Benz in Toronto. There you go. There's your Mike Wilner fix. And Neil Wagner, I mean, what a story that is. Must be great for a journeyman like that. It's great as, as fans and, and people who watch the game to see guys like that who are unheralded, who aren't the, the first-round picks, aren't uh, a highly touted prospect, to, to finally get their chance almost 30 and do well. It definitely is, and he's making the most of it. You look at the velocity that he has coming out of the bullpen, high 90s, striking out lots of guys, and he did that at AAA too. So if there's anyone who can sustain it, maybe Wagner can be that guy. Yeah, and he was a guy that almost made the team out of spring training, and right now it would be pretty much impossible to send him down. Uh, the way he's performed uh, hasn't allowed an earned run over four and two-thirds innings. 
headed into that series in San Francisco. Mentioned he was a 21st round pick. I mean, that's a bit of a crapshoot at that point. But the uh, June draft is coming up, and you can watch it on Sportsnet 1, of course, coming up on Thursday. That's a luxury. Love to, to see that. I mean, you go back years, and there's hardly any footage of the Major League Baseball draft. But now you can actually watch it in real time. The, the Blue Jays have the 10th overall pick, Ben. And uh, I know you're, you're looking forward to this draft, and Sportsnet.ca is going to be all over it and who the Blue Jays pick. And there's going to be a ton of picks. But uh, 10th overall, looking pretty good. Yeah, there are lots of good players that they can get with that selection. I think that they expect to get someone who can make an impact at the big league level. We'll have lots of coverage. We'll have basics, you know, just to cover the really ins and outs, the ABCs of the draft. And we'll get with some experts as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Shai Davidi has a piece talking to the Jays' amateur scouting director. So we'll have all sorts of basics and then some extras as well. The Major League Baseball draft is just unlike any other draft in any other sport. I mean, partly because there are so many rounds and there's so many players picked. But you just have to fill out those rosters because every team has four minor league clubs, right? And so you get late in, in rounds and, and maybe guys uh, that are picked late, you don't think about them at the time, but maybe 10 years down the road, like a guy like, uh, like Neil Wagner could end up on somebody's roster and make a difference. Exactly. Or even R.A. Dickey, who was a first rounder in 1996. Yeah, and then he's like, a long time, you yeah. know? So it, it can really be a, a lot of moving parts in the draft. And that's why it's fun to watch from day one. Yeah, it really is great. And uh, you look at some of the Blue Jays' draft picks of, of years past, really uh, coming to pass and, and being serious uh, players in the major leagues. And maybe we'll see Marcus Stroman, a guy they just picked last year uh, in the major leagues this year. Do you think at some point he factors in? I wonder if they're a little uh, shy of doing that after the Sean Nolan experiment. But could you see Marcus Stroman being a, a Blue Jay at some point this season? Definitely. I would actually be surprised if he doesn't make an appearance on mm -hmm. the big league roster at some point this year. And it's true that they could be a little gun shy after Sean Nolan's pretty short and not so sweet <laughs> outing, but I do think that it's someone that they're going to want to promote, and they don't have a lot of pitching depth like we talked about off the top. Yeah, they're definitely looking for uh, for starting pitchers. Uh, ben, great job. Uh, really enjoyed it. It's Ben Nicholson-Smith, Ben and Ben, and then Mike out there. Uh, ben, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll see again on the podcast going forward. You can follow him on Twitter as well. B. Nicholson-Smith. You can follow Mike on Twitter, at WilnerNess590. You can follow me on Twitter, at BennisSnet, and check out our audio podcast as well on Sportsnet590.ca and this podcast on Sportsnet.ca. I'm Ben Ennis. He's Ben Nicholson-Smith. He's Mike Wilner, wherever he is. We'll see you next week.